Since 2012, recreational cannabis has started to become legal in many states across the USA, and as more states legalize marijuana, a clear dichotomy has emerged between the legal and illegal markets, each with its own set of challenges and intricacies. As of 2022, the US legal cannabis industry was estimated to have annual sales reaching over $31.8 billion. Despite these impressive figures, the market was not without its difficulties. However, we must also consider the black market, which in 2010 was estimated to be worth up to $40 billion, depending on consumption patterns. In states such as California, Illinois, and Massachusetts, illegal marijuana sales have often outpaced legal ones. So why and how does the black market thrive in the era of legal Legalization? The reasons for this are multifaceted. In California, for example, complex, expensive, multi-step environmental review processes for marijuana growers and high taxes on legal marijuana products have made it more expensive and less accessible than its illegal counterpart. Moreover, the presence of cannabis deserts, or large areas with no dispensaries, have forced people to resort to the black market. This has resulted in the state's illicit cannabis market being valued at $3.7 billion, more than four times the size of the legal market. While lower prices for legal cannabis in Washington state have benefited consumers, they've created an oversupply problem, making the black market more profitable for growers. Lax enforcement around cannabis farming in Colorado has also made it an attractive location for black market growers who export illegally to states where cannabis remains illegal. But this burgeoning black market has significant consequences. Not only does it deprive states of tax revenues, but it also hinders the growth of the legal cannabis industry. The total potential demand for cannabis in the US, including the black market demand, is as high as $55 billion. Still, the legal industry can only thrive if more existing cannabis users choose the legal route and new cannabis users join the market. So how do we address this issue? First, states must lower taxes and ease the complex regulatory requirements that make it difficult to open new dispensaries. Moreover, a national cannabis policy, which could be facilitated by the federal government removing cannabis from its Schedule 1 drug classification, would make it harder for illegal growers to find black markets, thus reducing the bootlegging and cross-border smuggling. Lastly, we need to invest in education and awareness. We need to make people aware of the benefits of buying legal cannabis, such as product safety, quality assurance, and the fact that their money is going towards businesses that pay taxes and contribute to the local economy, rather than supporting the black market. Addressing the illegal cannabis market is not an easy task, but it is one we must undertake. It's time for our regulations to evolve to meet this demand legally, creating a more accessible, affordable, and regulated market. By doing so, we can help the legal industry thrive, reduce the reach of the black market, and create a safer and more beneficial environment for everyone. The demand for cannabis is there, and it's time for regulations to evolve to meet this demand legally. So what do you think? Will the government be able to reduce the number of illegal purchases? Or do you believe that even with new policies, the black market will unfortunately continue to thrive? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you're always in the know.